Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds by nerds, hang out with this nerd. Nerdark is Ted. And today we're talking about Dungeons and Dragons, character death, backup characters, and getting those characters into the game. Also, the death tax. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. Get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with us. So this time we are talking about a topic you saw on Facebook, I believe. Indeed. Character death, backup characters, and how long before you get back into the action with a new character. So character death is one of those things that has existed in the game since its inception. You gotta have the, the risk to really make the reward, but is it something that you should really be prepared for death, and should you come to the table with a backup character? Yeah, these are good questions, and how do you handle that character death, and when does the character... Like, all this stuff is going to come up. We've even done videos talking about character trees. We, you know, we, we, we've talked about character death before, but, you know, this is a little bit of a different spin, and, you know, it's, it's, it was prompted by this Facebook post, and this one person that literally said, like, if you die in this game, you don't get to come back until next session. Because he, he or she wants that proper intro. All right, what's your what's your new character? How am I how am I going to thematically storyline? How am I going to interject that into the game? Because I'm looking at Ted, guys, you cannot see my head, my eyes spinning in my <laughs> head rapidly, like I've almost time traveled. Well, the like, death tax, right? We're really talking about the death tax and this grand novel story that no one is ever going to know about, except for the players at the table that this DM is masterfully orchestrating. Right, yeah, so, I totally get all that. All right, so the death tax comes in many different, many different ways, different you know, flavors. Co com will. Coming in in the next session so that you can be properly woven into the story. If that's your thing, by all means, you go do your thing. We're, we're not in any way, shape, or form going to promote that avenue of thinking. Persons, persons die. They've lost their character. Apart from anything else, if everything comes back equal, the character that they've invested, they've put you know, thoughts, feelings, emotions into is gone. They now have to, have to come up with a new one. That in and in alone should be enough to say, all right, just make a new character and, and, and we'll get you in as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, that's right along the veins of a new player coming to the table, making up their character at the table, and watching everyone else play the game until they, can, until they get in. Like, we're very pro. If you're at the table, we want you to play the game. I want to get you into the story as fast as possible. Now, sometimes some of the interjections might require a little bit of hand waving or the players acknowledging that okay well this is a new pc maybe not to the same level that they do in the gamers like mm -hmm. oh you're an adventure travel with us <laughs> there should be a little bit more than that but not much that also just kind of made me think of another popular uh, you, uh popular sh stream that people enjoy watching <laughs> is how that kind of started um but well hold on let's let's continue on with the other the other flavors of the death tax okay so some DMs might say, well, there's going to be a level penalty. And regardless of what... We played in those games. We're like, you die, <laughs> you're, you die, and your DM is like, you fucking start over, and you're level one. But everyone else is 10th level. Well, That's your sorry. problem. When we were 6th level, new characters coming in or a character die when it, when it won. By the time we were like ninth level, it was 3 levels lower. I don't even think it was three levels level. I think it was third level, man. Oh. I think oh. you're misremembering. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we've had games where there's a level, a level tax, whether you're a new player or whether you've died. You come in less powerful than the, the people who have survived. And to me, this this is like, okay, all this is doing is promoting the survivability of the characters who have survived because these characters are just going to die over and over again. Yeah, they, they literally have no way to keep up with the rest of the players. But on the other side of that, the other players are going to be hampered as well because whatever party that was originally there, four or five, six, nine characters as the case may be. Fourteen. You know, however, however many are left that survived, now they have all these weaker allies that really, like, they might as well just use them as cannon fodder because it's all they're going to be good for at this point because they're so much lo lower level. And those characters are going to have a harder time surviving too now because overall, when you average the numbers, it's a much weaker uh, adventuring party. And I find that GMs 
who run this style of game, they're not going to care about that. Right. They're going to see, they're going to see. Oh, what's the highest level party member? And how many are you? Okay, that's what we have to prepare for. So the third flavor in this death tax is items and gear. Literally, when a player character has dropped in our game, it is like a video game where like their body has not even hit the ground and their gear is like flying in the air, <laughs> like like coins. Poof, and that's I think. That's Let me see from, the character sheet. <laughs> yeah, I think that has been pretty common in our some of our past games. Absolutely, I I, I don't think we've had uh, you know much in recent years. We've only had one character death, and there wasn't really a whole lot of gear at that point in time because I think you guys were only like second level. Yeah, but whatever there was, we probably took it. But we're <laughs> yeah. we're we're better role players now, so we probably like role played for a while and then decided but, he didn't need his stuff. Well, he's not gonna need it. I mean, I think yeah. I think uh, Ryan's character. Uh, had a connection with Mark's character. Yes. So, like, he used Mark's money to pay for the funeral. Yeah. <laughs> and then everything kind of got divided. If I remember correctly, that's going back, you know, a couple of years. But, okay, so the party, the, the character has died. His ma- his magical items have been divvied up amongst the, the party. The party is now stronger. And sometimes that character comes in with either no magic items or less magic items than, than what they had. There, well, there's also like kind of a little bit of the non-tax side too, depending on how generous your DM is, in the sense that maybe... So if your GM's not kind of a jerk and he's like, come back in, you can be the same level as the rest of the party, and he might go, well, here's the level of gear you can have, here's... You know, so just you know, go through the player's handbook and the DMG and, and assemble your stuff. So in the one sense, though, I will say sometimes... There's almost a little bit of a reward to it because you the, can pick specific gear that you want. Yeah, whereas a, as you know, as an adventuring player, you got what was available. Yeah. Now, I know personally, I don't give out the same level of gear to new players coming to the table, and I guess uh, to to players who have died. Now, there's not really a whole lot of death that can happen because of the sheer power level of the spells that you guys have access to. Unless you kill the cleric. <laughs> Unless you kill the cleric, which I've come close, but he, him and that death ward. I don't know if you guys can see the crazy look in Ted's <laughs> eye right now. <laughs> I don't have a crazy look. Rabid. But, Rabid look, oh, maybe. <laughs> I think there, you know, for me, there's some, there's some level of reward for having played the story, but I don't want them infantile in comparison i want you to feel like all right you are a properly equipped you know level level party or level level adventurer for what's there and then and also like the other caveat to that is getting them in as soon as possible when you can as, as the gm even if you have to hand wave some things we're not saying you need to do this in your game it's just what we do in our game the idea of saying you know your character died so you're done until next session. Well, what if it happened in the very beginning of the night? I'd be like, all right, bye, guys. Like, there's no point in me watching you guys play D&D. You're not Critical Role. Um, <laughs> I'm out. You know, I'll go home and really watch Critical Role or, or do something else. You know, let's suppose, you know, you average game sessions four to six hours. You die in that first combat. Are you really going to stick around for three hours? Like, all right, you might really enjoy what's going on. Or, or you might like be just so frustrated, like, all right, well, I'm gonna go make make a character, and you're gonna be bored, or you're gonna be a distraction, or you know, or you're gonna be kind of a, a, an interruption in the night, whether you intend to or not. I mean, that's a long time, and there's kind of really no point in sticking right. around. Forget that. I I die. I'm gonna I'm gonna and and you're telling me I can't come around until next session. I'm a, I'm a ghost and I'm gonna hang around and I'm gonna haunt you guys <laughs> until the rest get... of the sessions. I get a new character in the game. <laughs> yes, this is where I get to interact. I get to do something. Yeah, so like some of that stuff doesn't make a whole lot of sense to us. Uh, you as always, guys, run it in your game however you want. Uh, so we mentioned character death, which I think you know we're talking about the results of that and the possibility of a death tax and coming back and our thoughts. The other thing to mention would be the idea of a backup character and should you just come to the table with one. Now, let's start off right away. If your GM is the GM that says you, you can't come back until the next session, there's no, no point <laughs> like having a backup, unless you want to, but like if there's no benefit to it. Now, I don't make backup characters. It's not something that I've ever really done short of Dark Sun, which does require the character tree. It's like, this is a fatalistic game or a fatal game. 
you need to have three characters at all times. If somebody dies, you've got the ability to rotate in. And it is that hand wave. Well, we're going to get you into the thing, and you're now there. No explanations, no crazy nonsense. You're just in the party and keep rolling. But I do generally have ideas for characters that I want to play. But that's just the nature and, and love of the hobby that I'm always talking about this. So I'll have things that I want to do and things that I want to play. So I'm ready to go. And probably a file or folder full of uh, characters that you made up for one shots and things like that, that you're like, oh, I really would like to I play this. Adjust, yeah. yeah, I would really like to play this some more. So, and I do have players in my one game now is like, yep, my backup paladin, my backup character is a paladin. And then, then we got a new player and they're a paladin. And they're like, now my backup character is a warlock or whatever. <laughs> whatever it was she said. I don't remember. But like, yeah, so some people do make up backup characters. And sometimes people just like to make characters. Uh, so which I totally get that. My, my problem with doing that is is twofold. Number one, it it you know it makes me frustrated that I can't then play them. And two, there's the Hero Forge tax of, well, if I make a character, do I then want to make the mini? Uh-oh. And then do, I, then do I have to then buy the mini? Then do I have to then paint the mini? You do. You have no choices. <laughs> or is it no willpower? One or the I other. Think, <laughs> I think it's the willpower. <laughs> Ted, not... When it comes to Hero Forge, Ted always fouls his wisdom save. It's like, but, but, oh... <laughs> oh, nah, so like that's more of a thing is w- whether you want to or not. There's nothing wrong with having backup characters. I think we're nerds and we like to make characters, so it's kind of cool. So, so I mean, you get there, with what you like. There's that. There's that process of building it mechanically and story wise. That it's fun. I mean, we we get into this game of make believe. D and D really is is that we're we're playing with our imagination. With a set of rules. Now, I think it would be kind of cool to come to the table with backup characters that are kind of centered around the storyline that's going on. Like, then, like, it'll be... Like, it, 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 there's a couple things with that. One, it makes it easier for the GM to bring your character back in mm-hmm. without hand-waving, and you can probably come up with something really quick. And, and two, it creates an interesting challenge for you as the player to create a new character, but not just any character, one that fits in with what's going on and is kind of created around this current story. I, I completely agree. Best best way to end it. If you got a if you got a character death and you want to make it easy on your GM, tie that story, that, that backstory right into the current plot. It'll be so much easier to get get you back rolling with your party. What do you guys do with your table when it comes to character death, backgrounds, and getting back into the game? Put your thoughts and comments down below. While while you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can check us out over at nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay Stay nerdy. nerdy.